but I don't know whether it's the direction that she's been given. So I've not seen enough of her to know whether she's just a crap actress or not. Well, what would it help if I told you that she was uh, Spock's adopted sister? Probably not. What? And she's the reason Spock's the way he is. Oh, f*** off. What are you on about? No, I'm telling you <laughs> the truth. What? Season 3 of Star Trek Discovery marks a new direction for the series, a jumping on point of sorts. But are we at Midnight's Edge too biased from what came before to give it a new chance? Or to put it another way, how would someone who likes Star Trek in general, but who has never seen a single episode of Star Trek Discovery before, feel about it if their first exposure was Season 3? To find out, we, as in me, decided to invite our good friend, fellow YouTuber and filmmaker in his own right, Mr. H from Mr. H Reviews, to watch the first two episodes of Season 3 of Star Trek Discovery, back to back, and to share his feelings in our live review. So, Mr. H, <laughs> share your feelings. What did you think, jumping into Season 3 of Star Trek Discovery, not having seen anything up to that point well i was a bit confused with the opening um because there, there was an orc on the screen why, why was there an orc suddenly the uh that alien guy who was chasing after a uh, book just looked like an orc straight out of he's, he belonged in mordor that son of a bitch seriously because like, what, yeah. was he, what was he doing piloting a spaceship like what's what's going on with that because they blew their entire special effects budget on cgi they couldn't afford to Honestly, create any alien costumes awesome. But what 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 is the, what is the obsession? What what is everyone's obsession with like uh, pin art? Everything in the future seems to be pin art now. We open with this, <laughs> and it, and it's, it's actually um, it, it's it's a beautifully composed sequence, right? You watch this guy get out of bed, and he you know he he knocks his alarm off, and he goes to sit down at but but then it's distracted by all this stupid bloody pin art crap. He gets out of the bed, and then the bed disappears into pin art. What what? This seems to be like a remnant of Michael Bay and his Transformers, what they turned into. It's just ridiculous. Um, and then I spent the first 20 minutes, or well, first half an hour of that of that first episode wondering who Michael was. Turns out it was the woman. What? What, what was that? She's like, oh, my name, Michael Burnham, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, got tears in her eyes. So I'm like, oh, she's clicked because I've never watched any of it. So I'm like, oh, well, she's she, she must have lost her loved one. That's what it is. No. Turns out her name's Michael. They got me. They got me good. Well, <laughs> she did really lose good. her loved one because she's her own loved one, isn't she? Oh, oh, honestly, I could. And how? Oh, it's, I don't know. <laughs> I guess it's, I was at a loss. I, like, I, I hate to laugh. laugh but... suffering. <laughs> I just didn't. I honestly, I just didn't understand. I was like, okay, so your name's Michael. Well, that's fine. Whatever. Um, the guy has like some weird alien. Uh, prayer powers is he is he human is he an alien what is it because apparently he speaks in a in an alien language but he's not he's actually oh you know. mean the beast understand. master yeah like what is that uh, he's 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 basically ash ketchum and he? he wants to catch them all that spaceship is a glorified pokedex that's what it is <laughs> <laughs> oh no oh, oh i just it was ridiculous it was absolutely ridiculous um She's the acting's awful. Like the acting is, and oh my god, you've obviously spoken about all of this, but I've seen it for the first time. The galaxy took a hard left, and it was the burn. Isn't that what's <laughs> going on in the states at the moment? Everyone's having a hard left, and every, every everything's on fire. It's, and this is written and shot a year and a point. half before that. <laughs> I mean, they literally yeah. they said it. The galaxy took a hard left, and the burn happened. Well, think about it. It's called STD, though. I mean, that's yeah, you, yeah. You can't even. So we know it. it's gonna re. But, yeah. just, but it's literally real world events. Are they? Do they? Do they? What? I couldn't yeah, believe it. Like to know, back to the dark I ages. I couldn't believe it. Anyway, and then um, yeah, I said, "Hey, book it, actor was fine." Actually, how how was how was she able to take? 
massive uh, blows to to the chest and 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 at, like she's fighting a black man. Like he's he's a pretty big guy. Like the laws of physics do apply here. Apparently they don't, but never mind. Um, well, we saw how she survived that impact, right? <laughs> Well, so I was watching this, right? And I, I was watching this and I was like, right, so she's got up. And I could have sworn, I need to go back and watch it. But when she gets up out of that crater, she's cradling her right butt cheek, as in her, like her right hip going, oh, her right hip's bad. But then when she stands up the next time and goes, walk, um, she's doing her left uh, hip. So I'm like, did, did she forget which hip was bad? These, these are the Better little... Better they flip the shot, shot maybe on her. <laughs> Yeah, probably. Anyway, it's it's crap, isn't it? Like, it's not very good. Like, it's it's really well shot. But has anyone noticed the scene transitions? They're terrible. What's going on with the scene transitions? <clears throat> Would it make you feel any better if I tell you, like, the last couple episodes have probably been the best the show has ever been? Oh dear God! <laughs> what was what was what was with her? Why did she jettison the incredible technology that she had? And, and who was she talking to so violently and so quickly? Well, like, you're talking to a computer, love. Just slow it down, right? Like, I get there's some urgency, yeah. but she's like, hub, 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 go up now. And you're like, that's, yeah, we, 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 had, we all had a problem with that. And, you know, if you have this, at least, at the very least, cannibalize it for, for parts, you know. But I don't understand. Why did she? And if it's, there's, and if they're in the future. Why she did that? I don't know. No, who knows? Well I, don't, well, I don't know. There might have been in the last episode. Is there no, no. reason? There's literally no reason why she did that. Not really. Well, that's fucking retarded, then, isn't it? No. Like, what are you doing? Why did you? Why? <laughs> why, why? Why did you jettison it up into space? Like, what you got to realize that we've been trying to search for a reason for this for the last three years. <laughs> well, why did you make me watch it? <laughs> it's fucking god. Don't I ask me. Ask it. Andre. I'm not taking any blame for this. But we're All seeing, I ask is we're seeing our reaction in you. It. Like everything that you're going guess... through, we've already done. <laughs> we're just seeing then, it in a whole new light now. And then, and then, what was with those like? What what is with pin art, honestly? Because I I did a video on um, Power Rangers today, and uh, and I and I was, I was I thought back to the Power Rangers twenty seventeen, obviously because it's part of the video. And well, they, they were obsessed with pin art then. Why are we so obsessed with pin art? Well, at the moment? I, I think I think that it's this it's this whole thing about you know nanotechnology in the future and stuff like that. And, you know, I, but it's not it's not compelling. And all these screens no. in front of other things will mess up your focus. You you'd be permanently. Um, well, double crossed yeah. eyed, like you yeah. just be. You well, wouldn't know Al what you're looking at. Like, what's Alice, the point? Alice Kurtzman's always had a boner oh. for Iron Man. That's the thing. That's where that comes from. Honestly, well, why did he? Why did he jettison it into the sky? Then he could have kept reliving his Iron Man wank fantasy for a <laughs> good more, more few episodes. Anyway, it's so that episode was rubbish. I didn't. Un I did. It was. I didn't enjoy it very much right. at all. I just. I just. I, have I just. Two questions. I, I just love the fact that you said Iron Man wank fantasy. That that's actually hysterical. <laughs> I have uh, I have two questions uh, for that episode. Uh, number one, so what did you feel about the character that in the end actually is named Michael Burnham? Was oh, it did, great I acting? Was it intriguing character or what? As in the the actual character, the characterization. Yeah, the, of the, both the character and the actress and the acting and the writing and everything. Um, uh, will you accept so her I, as your new savior? Basically, no, of course not. God no. What's wrong with you? Slap you through the fucking computer screen. Um, yeah, exactly. No, she. <laughs> I was going to say you're going to question the whole my good friend thing that he said in the beginning. I know. But... I know. I'm, I'm I'm blocking you, mate. You you I'm you're going to you blocking you on WhatsApp, son. Um, <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> No, so, so as an actress, I, I can't quite identify whether she's got really bad direction or not because she's quite forced and shouty, but I don't know whether it's the direction that she's been given. So I've not seen enough of her to know whether she's just a crap actress or not. Um, but the direction was pretty bad, like all round. I don't care about I don't care about her. Like I don't care. She's quite aggressive, needlessly so, but then everyone seems to be quite aggressive, needlessly so in this universe at the moment. It just seems a lot, mm, I don't know. Like, why, why, why I, there's an orc pilot in a spaceship, for God's sake. I still, I still can't get around that. Well, you've actually directed some things now, uh, Mr. H. So I got to ask you, do you feel like it's more of the direction of the faster, more intense kind of thing? Like, as long as they say it loud and fast, then maybe it sounds more important. I mean, <laughs> well, no, well, 
But the thing is, is that obviously the director signed off on that. But it, but I don't know whether that's her characterization from the start, and they're trying to maintain continuity or not. Well, what, would it help if I told you that she was uh, Spock's adopted sister? Probably not. What? And she's the reason Spock's the way he is. Oh, fuck off. What are you on about? No, I'm telling you the <laughs> truth. What? <laughs> oh, fine, I guess. I mean, does it... it oh, whatever. Sure. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Uh, she's the superior Spock. <laughs> yep. What? Yeah, she's uh, she's yeah. the character that Spock grew up jealous of because she was so much better than him in what, everything. Oh, what was the drug scene? <laughs> what was that about? And the and the horrible motion blur. That, it was awful. That no. was a res- that was a response to her. Was the derivative. That was a response. Yeah, massively. To- that was a response to fans and everyone saying that her acting is too wooden. It's and, and really. she doesn't and she doesn't show enough emotion. So they had to cram all yeah. like three three years of emotion into one like like minute and a half. It just it look it's not it wasn't very good, was it? And yeah. then um Yeah, and no, I didn't I didn't know. No, yeah, it was just it was just weird. It, it just yeah. it was a lot of it was forced. The the acting, the direction, whichever it is. Like if <laughs> if that is how she's been for the whole uh, the, the 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 previous scenes, then uh, seasons, then it's just yeah, it's just terrible. It's just terrible all round, <laughs> isn't it? Really, like but oh. it's, it's very forced. Like the whole shouting thing, and and I I didn't. Oh, but God. Ah, oh, because I've just watched this other episode. <laughs> now obviously I'm still putting the first episode. What was the deal with that guy, uh, Sad Hill, Sad, Sad, Sid Hill, the, the Indian guy at the end? And he was like, That was mm-hmm. going to be my second question. She, she's literally in tears, going, I can't find my ship. And he, and he just goes, Do you want another? Do you, do you want to know another secret? And she, I'd be like, Fuck off, mate. I'm, cry, I'm trying to cry here. Like, what are you on about? And he's like, I'm not actually a Starfleet officer. And she's like, Well, no fucking shit, obviously. Like, what's the what? What was the deal with that? It feels like there was a whole two minute scene that was that was cut from that scene because she's there in tears after just realizing she can't contact her, you know, her ship. And then he just suddenly goes, Do you want to know another secret, Michael? I'm not a Starfleet officer. I'm like, What? what? Like, what is this? Yeah. Uh, H, I have a question about this. <laughs> uh, as for the writing, because basically that character, that was a guy who spent his entire life waiting for Starfleet. Forty years, like his father before him, or his father be- and his father before him, and the father before him. Basically, <laughs> that's, that's kind of like someone today waiting for a representative of the Roman Empire. Mm. To appear better yet it would be like somebody Rome. waiting for the return of jesus and their family can be traced all the way back true believers true, <laughs> yeah. true believers. i just what do you feel about the writing there well i can't get over the fact that they said the galaxy took a hard left and it and the burn happened i can't i can't <laughs> i can't i can't like are you we serious? are all just as confused by the burn trust but, me but you know but you know when they wrote that they looked at each other in the writer's room yeah, yeah. That's, oh, that's good yeah it's gonna be some convoluted bullshit like laser beam that only attacks dilithium i, I wonder if it's connected to picard in some way it, it will probably be connected Maybe to the ai, AI thing yeah. yep and it'll all go yes it'll all come back to the Yes, it's fucking stupid. It's, it's got to be, isn't it? And may, maybe, maybe that's the origin of the pin art machines. <gasps> and let's not forget they've already <laughs> gotten to the point where they have trilithium already. But Tri- you know, trilithium, dil- there's, there's honestly, there's, there's qu- quasi lithium coming up, coming out the wazoo. Um, yeah, it wasn't very good. I did not enjoy it. Um, and that's yeah. episode two. Well, that was a whole bunch of filler, wasn't it? Well, we got parasitic ice. It's I, well, better I, than space you, mushrooms, though. I'll tell you well, that. Much. I tell you what I found amazing about the parasitic ice is they led me to believe. I'm led to believe by the end of that episode that parasitic ice, a parasite, only stays in one spot. Why didn't it go to where they where the other machines were? Like, why is it only in one spot? Anyone it would have to make sense. Anyway. Yeah, no, no. You tell it's, us. Yeah, an organic creature no. would travel to to feast and feed. Exactly. <laughs> it's a living organism. It's gonna fuck off to other areas, but apparently it doesn't. It only stays in one area. 
Like, what's that about? No, I know. I said they could have. Like it. That's what it is. I said they could have easily, easily made this make more sense at the beginning just by saying, "Look, the way this planet works, that once it, the the sun goes down, it goes extremely sub zero, and everything is covered in ice. You've got X amount of time to get your fucking ship off this fucking yeah, planet. You, 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 you know, have, that's all they had to say. Yeah, do do like a I don't know, like a pitch black, you know, pitch black sort of thing. Just have like a, a time limit and and some form of threat. Because basically that everything do. that's oxygen will freeze. You yeah, know, yeah. like <laughs> parasitic ice. Yes. Parasitic ice. Of all things. Again, that's again, they're looking <laughs> at each other. Like, yeah. Good, good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, and wh- who who's this Asian woman running about? Who's okay. That? Now, Georgiou actually does require some explaining here. Because I, well, one, and again, people in the chat, whatever, you, I couldn't understand a word she was saying. I don't know whether it was the stream I was watching. It, did anyone else have trouble understanding what she was saying? I could catch uh, a few words here and there. I'm in yeah. subtitle land, so I'm good. Oh, the, the accent does even, the accent well, even for a native English. The speaker, character herself is the mirror universe version of Mikey Burnham's original captain. And when they went to the mirror universe, they brought her back. Why would you do that? Because they're fucking stupid. <laughs> that's the only explanation we've been able to come up with. <laughs> Why would you? Surely that's against uh, Starfleet regulations anyway. You shouldn't be bringing people back from other fucking universes. Because Mikey Spock missed her mommy figure. And that's wasn't she? And wasn't she the only one who knew how to win the war? Yes, between her and Lorca, that was the whole oh, thing. Oh, that was what Andre said in the beginning. Yeah, from the middle of the universe. Oh, there was there was a apparent. Okay, in season one, the very first episode, Mike Michael Michael. Was we call her Mikey Spock? Mikey. We call her Mikey. Hey, Spock, Mikey. Yeah. We call her and Mikey actually, Spock. I think, didn't Doomcock actually coin that? Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, you know, we just call it Mikey Spock. Thank you to Overlord DVD Take the Rank Doomcock. She killed an emissary from the Klingon Empire and started an interstellar war. And apparently, they she went, went to prison for this too, mind you. She went to prison with it for this. Who, yeah, who, no, who did? Sorry, who? Michael Burnham. She went to prison for this. The Mirror Universe one. No, no, no. no. The this real Mike, one. The regular one. Yeah. This this one. Yeah. It's as it's as it's as stupid as it sounds. Sorry, she started yeah, a she war. Billions of people, basically. Oh, she's yeah, yeah, she started a war. A war she's a war criminal. Got thrown in prison, and then then only for two years. Uh, yeah, I think it was only three months or something. like It that. wasn't very long. They pulled her out because they needed her because story, and then they gave her a pardon because fucking story. Yeah, J- just yeah. like Picard. Yep. I'm not going to yeah. kill anybody anymore. <laughs> Every, yeah, everyone gets pardons. Mass genocide, no worries, mate. Just have a pardon. You Just, have a pardon. I have a pardon. You have a pardon. Everyone gets pardoned. No, no worries. But in that in that war, in, in, in the midst of starting that war, she got her captain killed. So she felt guilty, and most of and most of her crew killed, and and just about like half the fleet destroyed, and probably tens of millions of civilians. Now, guys, let's be fair here. She didn't just get her captain killed. She got her captain eaten because the That's 25% true. different Klingons that look like orcs are cannibals. <laughs> the look on your face. <laughs> oh, man. You're like, what the oh, fuck? My God. What is this? Seriously. And they got two sets of genitals, too, by the way, but we won't even get into that. That's um, yeah. Yeah. Why does that even need to be mentioned in Star uh, because, Trek? Because there's a Klingon sex scene. Why? Well, yeah, she Klingon raped some dude. Yes. Yeah. And now in this, we've got no. Klingons. Oh, oh it got better. There was this oh, whole convoluted God. story idea of this guy who had a Klingon grafted onto him. What? Like a conjoined twin? Don't what? ask how it fucking works because we don't know. <laughs> we we can't forget. We, he got his <laughs> nerve point in that. They implanted the nerve. Apparently, he's like a see- sleeper cell agent kind of thing. Yeah. Like it was really fucking convoluted like, shit. Are we talking about like some um... Mancurian candidate stuff <clears throat> uh, thing? Yeah. So no. So so yeah. So, 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 sorry, altered, no, maybe. so is it literally like a man walking around with a mini version of a Klingon? Honestly. Kind of, kind, yeah, pretty much. Like what? all they, what they explained was they took the man's body and they grafted on the is, Klingon. So is, is this his like nervous system or something? To his yeah. nervous system and is bones like the, and everything. Yeah, the Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger version of 
Total Recall. Then. And like the whole thing was, is this the the Klingon you know? lady that raped him? The baby that she was pregnant with sorry, no, sorry, wasn't what? his. Sorry, Klingon lady. That raped yeah, him. yeah, it's all convoluted shit, man. I'm trying to explain it, and I don't know how to do it. I know, but you're breathing <laughs> over stuff which is massively. Red the one flags. that raped the, the human guy, even though he was human, she's having the baby of the Klingon that was grafted onto him. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, no. No, I, I, I didn't expect you to say yes. Tom, but I, I, watched, <laughs> I watched it, and that doesn't even make sense to me. But I'm telling you what happened, and it's fucking there. It's I, that's what happened. I know. I know. And then to create some like big convoluted fucking peace thing, she fucking cuts off a fake baby head. It pretends like she killed her own baby. And they're like, oh, the best. Oh, oh the best. And Klingon part. guy's like, guess what? I'm not going to kill anybody anymore. Okay, we'll let you go. They're just so easy to <laughs> not, not only that, they, they let him be in Section 31. Oh, and, and the, be oh, the best part is that, uh, that the captain who had a, a, th a thing for Mikey Spock uh, in the beginning, who sprang Mikey Spock out of prison, um, he hires this this Klingon sleeper agent because he he meets him in a prison cell with Harry Mud with no other like no other uh, vetting vetting process uh, to mention. So he's like, oh yeah, you seem like a cool guy. You're my head of security now. I'm like, really? It's that easy to get a job in in, in the federation. Well, are you surprised, Rob? They turned <laughs> around and said he because he said, oh, I'm I'm feeling better now. So they <laughs> let him be in Section Thirty Fucking One. <laughs> You know he killed how many? Oh yeah, I forgot to mention he killed how many fucking people? I'm not making. <laughs> I know he. How many did he kill? Script like three or four. So, so stupid. He killed at least a couple people. I remember that. But they're like, okay, he's fine. We'll let him go. I'm genuinely laughing. It's so stupid. That isn't even getting into he the spore the, um, shit. The gay, he killed the gay uh, doctor's husband. Yeah, oh. and then they brought him back through the mushrooms. Oh, and there's a magic. Culver, there's a right? there's yeah. a mush. There's a there's a, a there's a, a a warp drive that runs on mushrooms, but they need a gigantic tardigrade for it to run. But the tardigrade is is gonna die, so they have the as I call him, Gay Scotty. They hook him up to the mushroom drive, and it can transport you anywhere in the universe on a whim. The, the guy who was in that tunnel at the end of this one, yeah, in the, in the Jeffrey tube of all names, yeah, the blonde, the yeah, blonde guy. That that gay relationship is very forced isn't it like the acting are you fucking kidding me they had like a whole fucking <laughs> very discomfort uncomfortable fucking five minute scene in one of the episodes where all they're doing is sitting there talking and brushing their teeth and it is one of the most uncomfortable scenes i've ever seen on television and not the because they're the gay it's is, just you can they have no chemistry whatsoever no, that's, that's the thing exactly like uh, you need to get better actors to to, to portray gay people like Better people would like the thing is, is that they just seem to go, Oh, well, we have to hire gay people to be gay people. Like, no, people can act, right? Get someone yeah. who can act and, and can and can represent uh, you know, a gay yeah. relationship better. Because you're not you're doing a disservice to homosexuals right there. Because it looks yeah. fucking ridiculous. Like it looks terrible. Oh, you what? oh you should have seen like the love scenes and everything between oh, No, I they're no, cringe I, as shit. I, I, I'd rather not. Like, if it's equally as cringy as this shit, I'd really rather not. Quite frankly. And before somebody wants to sit here and go, "Oh, we're all homophobic," look, I I, I love the movie. I love the movie Rocket Man, and I'll tell you right now that there's scenes in that movie where I I believed their relationship. I was sick, pissed off at that guy that fucked him over in that movie because the, the, you believe their relationship. Well, exactly. This is the thing: is it's not about saying don't have the gay people in it. It's about have having better people to play the gay people. That's what I'm saying. I'm, exactly, I yeah. I don't care if there's gay people in it. It's just, it's not believable. Like, have some better actors to portray the gay people. That's what I, that's, that's all I want from that. Because it, it was terrible. They were like, he was like, are you, are you punishing me or something? He's like, yes. And I'm like, are you, what? Are you like, are you some bitchy Miami fucking like, like go go dancer? Like, what's you have going no on idea. Here, you should have seen him at fucking Star Trek Las Vegas. Oh my God. Oh, anyway, what I, age, what I, what, what you have to know is that basically for every single oh. season, they have effectively rebooted the series because the previous season was so crap and so universally hated. Mm -hmm. And that's what they did here by basically sending oh. the whole thing a thousand years into the future. And the funny thing, is what Spock 
the the empty shell of a man that Michael B Burnham had to teach how to be Spock. <clears throat> uh, the final thing that he said was that, well, now let's all pretend that this never happened. Yeah, that's that's why that's why nobody ever references Michael uh, Spock's adopted sister and the fact that they're uh, the the star the starship discovery is because they were all sworn to secrecy oh, despite this huge battle having taken place with like thousands and thousands of people and everybody witnessing it and nobody ever said hey yeah was your cousin on that ship yeah we don't talk about that he's no no the, the, your cousin Lu the Louis yeah he was on that we don't talk about that. It's just <laughs> he's he's not joking. Be sure to watch the full stream this clip was taken from and check out Mr. H Reviews YouTube channel. Both are linked to in the description.